Got another question for the organic nitrogen compounds topic, and this one includes questions about nitriles, amines, amides, and there's a mole calculation at the end. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you wanted to try them first. So the first question is testing our knowledge of organic reactions. So can sodium cyanide in ethanol react with this? And the answer is no, because it reacts with carbonyls. We don't have a carbonyl group in this substance. So there's our answer there, A. And just for revision purposes, let's just run through the others to explain why they weren't the right answer. So ethanol in the presence of an acid catalyst can react with the carboxylic acid group and make an ester. Acid anhydrides can react with alcohols again to make an ester. And concentrated sulfuric acid can react with an alcohol and dehydrate it to an alkene. So that's why A was the answer. Moving on to the next question, again test now our knowledge of the organic reactions. So which of the following reaction produces propan one all the alkaline hydrolysis of one chloropropane. Well, there's the equation, and you can see it has produced propan one all Reaction two, the acid hydrolysis of propyl methanoate. So there's the reaction there, and you can see it's making propan one all again. And the third reaction, the acid hydrolysis of propane nitrile. So there's the equation. It hasn't made propan one all It's made propanoic acid and ammonium chloride. So one and two only. So the answer was B. So moving on to the next question now, again, test now knowledge of organic reactions and reagents and conditions. So propanone, when it's reacted with NaBH4, it gets reduced to a secondary alcohol. So that's gonna generate that product there, which is propan 2 all Moving on to the next reaction, so how do you go from this to this? How do you turn an alcohol into a halogen or alkane? You react it with sodium bromide in this case, because we're putting bromine on, sodium bromide and sulfuric acid. And for the rest of the flowchart, we've got to focus on salt H here. So what needs to be in this box before then? Well, we need an NH2 group. We need to generate an amine here. So there's the structure of the amine there. So now all we need to think about is, well, how do you go from a haloalkane to an amine? We react it with ammonia in ethanol. And now the final change. So what's happened? We've gone from NH2 to NH3Cl. So it's obviously reacted with HCl. Moving on to part B. So apart from the benzene ring, what are the functional groups are in aspartame? So we'll just go from left to right. The first one is the ester group. The next group we've got is this one here. So this is an amide group. It's actually a secondary amide, but we just had to say amide. The next group is this one here. So we've got an amine, that's a primary amine. But again, we just had to say amine. And there's one more functional group. This one here is obviously a carboxylic acid. Moving on to the next part, so the aspartame is hydrolyzed with aqueous acid. So we've just got to think about which bonds are going to be broken. So the ester bond will be broken, so this one here, and the amide bond, so that's that one there. Okay, so we'll just take each part in turn. So there's an organic compound formed here, that's going to be methanol. Then if we think about this bit between those two broken bonds, so this C double bond O part becomes a carboxylic acid group. The NH becomes an amine group, but because it's aqueous acid that's in, um, doing the hydrolysis, the nitrogen can accept H plus ions from the acid and it becomes an NH3 plus group. And then finally, this part here. So just as before, this part here will become a carboxylic acid group. And the NH2 group that was already there That'll pick up an H plus from the acid and it'll become an NH3 plus group. And finally, the amount of substance calculation, the mole calculation. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out the maximum daily intake for a typical adult. So I'm just going to multiply the per kilogram value by the average mass of a person. So 75 
times that. Next thing we want to do is work out how many moles of aspartame are in a can of diet drink, so just mass over MR. So that's how many moles of aspartame are in the can. So the maximum number of cans that you can drink safely is going to be the maximum number of moles divided by the moles per can. So that's coming out at 22.45 cans, so you could either say 22 cans or you could say 23.